Hello and welcome to this episode of Confirmer Cooling Workflow. My name is Sachin Fulsundar. I am a simulation specialist at Autodesk India Private Limited. So before I get and started on explaining on to the workflow on Confirmer Cooling, I want to give a brief upon what does Confirmer Cooling is all about. So this clears a little bit concept about the Confirmer Cooling. It's, it's Confirmer Cooling channels are of any shape close to the uh, to the part surfaces they just follow the like an part profile to extract the heat uh, better than the conventional one these are usually generated by laser uh, selective laser melting process uh, of course there are other different processes also also available in the in the in the in the market so uh, what do you uh, why it is needed actually or why there is need for it is the faster cooling uh, reduction of the cycle time if you take an overall uh, complete injection molding process uh, cycle time contributes to the uh, cooling time contributes to about 60 to 75 percent of that whole uh, cycle time uh, of course uh, it also impacts on to the better quality reduction in the deflection better surface quality and of course in on all saving in the energy and increasing the production volume as well so what are the compelling reasons for the tool maker to switch to the confirmer cooling? There is a continuous pressure from the OEMs to reduce the per part cost eventually. And tier ones are looking for reducing the cooling time uh, to 60 to 70 percent of the, uh, which contributes to 60 to 70 percent of the cycle time. Complex cooling channels which follow the part profile can be manufactured by the 3D printing. Uh, as I mentioned earlier is the Selective laser melting process is one of the process that can be used for the 3D printing of metals. Uh, so this reduces the overall uh, tool development time. Now let's look at the how does it helps in reducing the tool development. And it is a comparison between the conventional way of manufacturing the tool versus the 3D printing. In 3D printing, we need an actually a CAD model of the the profiled cooling channel and then we sub put it to the give it to the machine for the processing of uh, or manufacturing of that and then post processing probably use use the subtractive operations against to remove that excess of material on it whereas in the conventional process you know all the like and you start from the CAD and then you uh, make a, a discharge electrode machinings and then again a CAD model if needed for the modification and then it goes for the mold making process. This is, and if you see a comparison between two process uh, as usually uh, services that 60% reduction in the production process. Now let's discuss on the confirmer cooling example on this. This is one of the uh, our customer who has shared this profile pictures of confirmer cooling and they want to compare be, uh, uh, between the traditional cooling process and, and the confirmer cooling uh, mm, mm, geometry before they go for the manufacturing. So they want to use the uh, mold flow simulations for the validation of confirmer cooling versus the traditional one. So how does this looks like? Uh, and how we are going to uh, do the comparison? You can see there is a two uh, geometries in front of you. One is the confirmer cooling, which has a very complex cooling channels all the way going inside the part profile and the conventional one, but pretty straightforward just moving around the part geometry and what we are going to compare is to time to reach needed uh, uh, to reach the ejection temperature of uh, uh, 195 uh, so we will see that which of the cooling profile or cooling geometry helps to reach faster to the ejection temperature of one amp with that we would like to share the some demonstration and how do we get started about it First and foremost, I want to get started with the geometry preparations and I, for that, I'm going to use the Fusion 360. I'm going to upload the geometry to the Fusion 360, which allows me to import various file formats right from the major CAD for platforms to the neutral file formats. Once the geometry is imported in the, in the Fusion 360, I will start patching up the holes locations so that I can create the internal cooling channels with the utility called internal fluids so i'm quickly using a 
patch command from the surface menu and patching up the holes uh, and you could have a much complicated cooling geometry or the mold geometry where you can use the same uh, methodology. This is just to enclose the geometry so that um, when we are extracting the internal volume, it doesn't have any open openings left over there. Then we move to the solids and then I would be looking for the fluid volumes. And when I select the fluid volume, make sure that you select that internal one. Select the geometry which you want to and maybe you get an error. Select the patch locations. Probably I would uh, insist on selecting the inlets and outlets. Doesn't matter even if you are selecting all the patch regions for that block. And it works very fast. Just on one click, it creates the internal uh, geometry. I would prefer creating the you know internal cooling channels in the Fusion 360. This will avoid a lot of surface error provided than you getting it from the third-party CAD solutions. Now we will go to the much uh, detailed one, the complicated cooling channels that are passing all the way to the co part cores or the core with the with the separate insert. We have, we have created and this is particularly the insert that we will be 3D printing it. And you can see that how quickly it extracts that uh, channel. And probably this is how it looks like quite complicated. Once this is done, you have to just push in the geometry from here to the mold flow inside solutions. Now let's look at the how the analysis setup uh, is all about. I have created and the pushing the geometry from inside. I am into the inside solution now. We'll be importing that geometry. You need not to follow that process. If you are importing the geometry or exporting the geometry directly from Fusion 360, it will get into the Synergy automatically. But you have an option to save as a step file or so as well. The first and foremost save the thing is to change the attributes of the mold to the 3D block. So all of the entire mold blocks I will be converting into 3D block and then I will be assigning the properties to the channels selecting all change the properties to the channel 3D. And once this is done I will start assigning the uh, you know, boundary conditions but before assigning the boundary condition I can select the analysis type as the cool FEM fill pack warp or anyone can see, select as a cool cool FEM as well and I'm start assigning the inlet and outlet locations to the cooling channels probably when we are, you are working on a um, 1D type of elements or the beam channel so you just need to assign the inlets but for the 3D channels or the transient cooling analysis you need to make sure that you assign the inlets and the outlets so I'm assigning an inlet a coolant of water at 30 degree uh, centigrade with a flow rate of 10 liters per minute. At the same time, I'm assigning the boundary conditions of the outlet as well. And I'll start the meshing of the cooling channel. So when you go into the cool FEM, it gives a very systematic way that how do you go and start the first and foremost, it will start the meshing of the part. And then so once the meshing of the part has a 3D is done, then I will start meshing the cooling channels as a 3D mesh. Make sure that your cooling channels are visible when you are meshing for that. Pretty fast it does it. And once the meshing is completed, I have completed. And then the next step is to create a 3D mesh for the mold. This process is pretty much very similar to the transient cooling, except in the transient cooling, we can use the 1D element as well uh, for the dual domain mesh. Here, everything for when you're working on a confirm cooling, everything needs to be in 3D, including the cooling channels. So I'm just making the global edge legend for the outside mold surface little bigger than the default. Probably this will help you to reduce the number of elements that's on to the outside of the mold let's create outside of the mold and once the meshing is completed and pretty much you are ready to launch the analysis and you can select the required 
material that you want to try the analysis in this case we will be selecting the material which has the ejection temperature of 195 and this is where we would be doing a comparison between the conventional and the confirmer cooling channel and we are putting it automatic as an ejection criteria would be to reach the what time would be needed to reach that 195 and will be running as a transient cool analysis so probably if you have got the chance to look at my earlier video on to the transient cool analysis where I tried all the three different options as an transient cool analysis and then uh, transient within the cycle or average within the cycle and uh, production startup. So these are the different types of uh, yeah, transient analysis you can run it uh, uh, for for the um, for the mold and and same you can do it for the uh, conformer cooling as well once it is completed it takes a while to run that and now you will be looking at the uh, the temperature of the inset particularly that is would be of interest because here the cooling channel has got deep into the core and we'll be looking at the how the temperature of the mold is changing and we are since we have run the transient analysis it will show you a temperature how it is varying and could be able to effectively cool that top surfaces as well and you can see the impression of the cooling channels as well as it runs the another plot that would be of interest is to look at the the channel the flow through the channel these are very complex channels you can see the shape of it and velocity through the channels can be checked it through that you can also view as and lines through the channel which will show the flow lines and other is the velocity of the flow for through the channels and this gives an information now where the flow is stagnant where the flow is running faster and probably wherever there is a stagnant flow you can make the changes and improve the cooling channel layout and this is where the simulations can help you to extract the heat much effectively efficiently from the from the geometry okay and this is how the comparison looks like conventional versus conformal the conventional one that you can see that the channels are uh, sorry the core is quite high temperature elevated temperature and probably not be able to extract the heat effectively versus the conformer cool which is trying to extract the heat much faster way and when we do a comparison on the uh, convention in terms of the temperature difference the cycle time and increasing the production so you could see that the maximum mole temperature difference is 35 degrees centigrade versus the like an uh, the conventional one cycle time has reduced by 51 percent for the conformal versus the conventional and that helps to increase the productivity by 67 percent it's not only on increasing the productivity but just look at the, uh, the quality of the product the conventional versus the conformal with the conformal cooling you could able to get a much better product with less deflection versus the conventional which is having a much higher deflections particularly in the core sections and this may increase your scrap rate so how does mold flow can help you into the conformal cooling uh, uh, validations you can compare the multiple designs side by side and you can take a much cautious step or the much uh, you know informed decision uh, when you are going for the conformer cooling mold design or the printing of the conformer cooling insert this is an expensive process and probably the simulation is the one of the best way to validate before you go for the printing of it advanced simulation technology with a voxel solver reduce the simulation time by 50 percent for the 3d mesh and this is uh, we we tried doing it with the earlier uh, simulation as well what we are for 1d element supported transient analysis which i showed it in earlier video uh, so the customer having a even the inside standard can also run the conformer cooling and i make a statement over here the channel has to be modeled with 1d element 
Inside standard doesn't support for the meshing of the 3D channels. If you have a 3D channel, very complicated one, which cannot be represented with the 1D element, then it has to be represented with the 3D channels. And then you need an inside premium license to run the confirmer cooling for the 3D channels. And the another option is these are like an quite an uh, uh, you know computer in uh, compute intensive process probably more flow inside uh, solutions uh, with the power of the cloud computing can help you uh, you know reduce that computation time and launch multiple analysis at a time provided you opt for the cloud compute and that is on the cloud credit basis you have to buy the cloud credit separately for it as we discuss on to the all the you know advantages but there are some challenges that tool makers are facing as well many of the tool makers doesn't have a metal 3d printing capabilities in house the outsourcing of 3d printing is, is more preferred by the tool maker than in house manufacturing it's an expensive tool uh, or machine and probably the most of the tool maker may not go for the 3d printing for each and every tool Though the confirmer cooling inset for more efficient cooling and reduction in cycle time, traditional is preferred. That ease of manufacturing, no need of the specialist skill set, and volume of the confirmer cooling insert mold does not justify the in-house investments. So, I, so as discussed as you know the advantages, I thought of putting it from some of the challenges as well. I'll not call this as a disadvantage, but the challenges and over the period of time when the 3D printing uh, you know, technology or attitude technology will gain its popularity soon, it, this process will be becoming more economical. And I'm sure that each of the tool maker will have in-house 3D printing capabilities on skill set as well. Thank you for your time. I hope you like these sessions. If you need to have more such sessions, please feel to reach out to Autodesk team. And if you need a more detailed information, please reach out to our specialized SIM resellers or SIM partners in your region. Thank you for your time.